Hello everyone. I welcome all of you to this lecture. Previously, uh, we have seen uh, this cathode ray tube, and it's uh, working. So, in last lecture, we have uh, completed the working principle of this electron gun. Okay, and we have talked a little about this vertical uh, deflection plates and horizontal deflection plates. Okay. so let's talk more about this vertical and uh, horizontal deflection plates so generally if you see uh, previously we have uh, discussed about this that is uh, inside a cro uh, cathode ray tube is a most important part and inside a cathode ray tube electron gun is again uh, important part okay so we have seen that electron gun and when you understand the working of this electron gun so more than 50% of the working of cathode ray tube is or cro is or so let's see the next part that is a deflection plate assembly so we will just talk about this deflection plate assembly and after that uh, we will see uh, in detail on you know, horizontal and uh, vertical deflection deflection system after a study of this that fluorescent screen okay so if you see the deflection plate uh, so it is shown over here okay so these are the vertical and horizontal plates and these are the leads to which we have to apply the voltage and how to apply the voltage and uh, how uh, we are getting the deflection of beam that we will see afterwards okay so uh, this is the basic diagram that we have seen uh, but if you want some animated view of the cro's uh, inside part or cathode ray tubes inside part then it is shown over here this is the diagram Uh, which shows you animated view of the uh, the diagram of a cathode ray tube that we have studied earlier like this okay so this is the animated view uh, now you can cl clearly so see uh, over here so this is the heating element so we have to apply the power supply to this which will be converted into heat energy by heater or heating heating element and whenever the heat is applied to the cathode it emits electrons okay so to get this beam we have to apply some uh, insert assembly like this accelerating and focusing anode and all, all all other things that we have discussed earlier okay and how much voltage is required that also we have discussed earlier so while studying this or uh, while listening this please uh, do most important thing is that please make a note of that okay so uh, as it, this is the theoretical part it is not possible to include each and every part of theory part of the theory Uh, inside this slides okay so that's why uh, i will be focusing on explaining this rather than uh, reading uh, on a slides okay so that's why uh, you have to uh, make a notes of that otherwise uh, in books each and every point is given in detail uh, but i want to explain that okay i don't want to read that okay so that is most, most important thing i want to tell you so here uh, we have to discuss about this x plates and y plates now uh, if you see this y plates these y plates can be uh, Uh, called as uh, deflect y deflection systems and this x plates also can be called as x deflection systems okay so here uh, when uh, the electron beam is uh, ac accelerated by this anodes uh, or this uh, anode assembly then it passes through uh, the deflection plate assembly as shown over here okay and this beam can be positioned anywhere on a on the screen okay so but what we have to do is that we have to apply certain voltage to this plates okay so initially if you see it will uh, it will be bombarded at a sense the center of the screen okay the deflection plate assembly of this uh, crt consists of two pairs of parallel plates okay and these are called as vertical and horizontal as discussed earlier now uh, what we have to do is that uh, we have to apply some external deflection voltage uh, through an internal adjustable gain amplifier to one of the plates of horizontal and vertical plates okay and uh, other plate should be grounded so what we have to do is that we have to use some internal amplifiers for that uh, and if you are having two plates then we have to uh, ground one plate for example suppose if, if you want to apply the voltage to this x plates then what you have to do is that we have to select any plate and that that should be grounded and another plate should be connected to the voltage similarly if you want to ap apply the voltage to y plates then uh, same thing should be done over here again Uh, take uh, connect one plate to ground and another to the potential that you want okay positive or negative because uh, i think uh, the you are clear in your basics whatever the voltage we are talking about the positive and negative voltage that is measured with respect to ground okay suppose for example 
if you if we are discussing about, about 5 volt that 5 volt is with respect to 0 volt means what and uh, if you take a voltage uh, voltage comes with two lines one is at 0 level and one is at 5 level okay and suppose we are talking about minus 4 volt that minus 4 volt is with respect to that ground or 0 volt that you have to keep in mind means one line is connected to ground and another, another is minus 4 i think this much basics uh, is clear uh, at this level okay so this is the way you have to apply the voltage uh, but uh, the external voltage is applied through external terminals called as y input or x input okay suppose it is applied to the y y plates then it is called as a y input and if it is applied to the x plates it is called as a x input now uh, as discussed earlier the positive voltage uh, applied to this x uh, input terminal will uh, cause the electron beam to deflect horizontally okay so that's why these are also called as x plates are also called as horizontal plates so this is another name to the horizontal plates that is x plate okay uh, and uh, that we have discussed earlier this positive voltage uh, will, uh, uh, which will which will be applied to the x plates uh, will cause the electron beam to deflect horizontally towards right okay towards right and negative voltage uh, when applied to the x plates uh, x uh, input terminal it will cause the electron beam to deflect horizontally towards the left okay now again i am repeating so whatever the positive voltage that you are going to apply to this x input or x terminal uh, it will cause the electron beam to deflect horizontally towards the right means this side okay means it will it will um, rotate to right side similarly if the negative voltage is applied to the x uh, input terminal it will cause the deflect uh, it will cause the electron beam to deflect horizontally towards the left side so uh, towards this side okay so uh, similarly again uh, as we have discussed earlier the uh, y voltage is applied to the y input terminal and it will uh, cause the beam to uh, deflect up, up, up and uh, down side uh, or uh, we can say upwards and downwards ok now uh, I think uh, the idea is uh, clear here I think uh, you got this about the deflection of the x plates similarly uh, if you talk about the y plates here if the positive voltage is applied to y terminal then it will cause the electron beam to deflect vertically upwards okay see for positive it will uh, deflect uh, upwards and when whenever it is applied as a negative uh, it will cause uh, that beam to deflect vertically downwards okay so for positive it is upwards and for uh, negative it will be downwards okay and but if you see here uh, this uh, uh, horizontal deflection and the vertical deflections uh, uh, that require some sensitivity inside that okay and if you see the deflection which is usually measured in uh, centimeter or the number of divisions okay uh, on the scale of the horizontal direction or vertical direction and uh, that can be called as a horizontal sensitivity and uh, vertical sensitivity okay so in book if you refer you will get all this details that uh, constant on proportionality and all, all other things okay so I will not go uh, so deep into that because we have to cover the syllabus. So I think this much is sufficient for the basics working of a deflection plates. Okay. So let's move towards uh, the next thing, the most important thing that is nothing but your fluorescent screen. Also, okay. So let's talk more about this. Again. Uh, one thing I want to discuss is that the focusing is nothing but electrostatic focusing that I have discussed in last lecture as well. Okay, now let's talk more uh, about the fluorescent screen. Okay, now uh, if you see the front end of the CRT uh, that is shown over here, the so purposefully I have taken this diagram because uh, through the colors and through the animations you will understand better. So, if you see uh, this front end of the CRT, it acts as a fluorescent screen. Okay. So if you see this is the fluorescent screen and if you see this generally uh, the screen comes with uh, a dimension of 100 uh, into 100 mm and inner side of this screen if you see this screen the inner side of the screen is coated with the phosphor and why we are using a phosphor uh, that also we have discussed earlier and if you see uh, this phosphor this phosphor consists of a pure crystal uh, of a uh, phosphorus materials okay so that is very necessary now why we have used is here phosphor uh, 
uh, I think you have studied that in chemistry because phosphor converts the electrical energy uh, into light energy. Okay, so whenever an electron strikes on the or electron beam we are talking about uh, strikes on a phosphor crystal. So we have to use crystal here th that I have discussed earlier. So their energy level is increased. Okay, and this causes uh, the phosphor crystal uh, to emit the light because uh, they gets excited at this time. And this phenomenon is phenomena is generally called as a fluorescence. I think this also you know. Okay. So due to this pro property of this uh, phosphor material, we are using the phosphor material uh, to display our waveforms or uh, different signals on zero. Okay. Now the light produced by this phosphor crystal on the screen uh, does not immediately disappear. Okay. This you, you have to keep in mind because when the electron beam is uh, uh, applied or when the beam is uh, switched off uh, the phosphor crystal uh, will uh, return uh, their initial state and they will release and con quantum of the light energy and the time period for which the trace is visible is called as a uh, persistence or a, uh, phosphorances okay and this persistence can be a few microseconds or 10 or seconds or even in minutes based upon the material that you are using okay so Again, uh, keep one uh, important thing in your mind is that I am talking about the uh, this phosphorus materials. One most important property that is a persistence. Okay, so what do you mean by persistent? Let me repeat again. So whenever the uh, be electron beam is switched off, suppose you have applied initially this electron beam on a screen, and when the light produced by this phosphorus crystal is on the screen uh, is visible, uh, and when the beam is switched off, uh, this light does not immediately disappear okay whenever the beam is switched off okay so when this beam is switched off the phosphor crystal will return to their own uh, initial state but they will uh, require some uh, time and that time period is uh, nothing but uh, that trace is nothing but a persistence okay but this persistence property of this material uh, is used uh, based upon your requirement okay or your applications okay sometimes you will require the low persistence sometimes you will require the high persistence okay that is again important thing now the other met other metal uh, that can be uh, applied is such as silver manganese or copper and chromium are added to this phosphor material okay so generally we are not using this that uh, pure uh, phosphor material directly because other metals such as silver or copper or chromium can be added to this so these metals are called as activators so, so they are used to change the properties of pro properties of a phosphor uh, such as its uh, efficiency and its uh, emission or spectral emission we can say and its persistence okay now uh, the short persistence phosphors are used for high speed applications okay so they require frequent uh, refreshers uh, because the operations are very fast in this in that case and okay so should not hold that light energy for a long time so that's why the short persistence phosphors are used for high speed applications talking about medium persistence phosphors they are used for general purpose applications okay so uh, long persistence phosphors are used for medical applications like radars or uh, storage oscilloscope okay so these are uh, three different types of uh, persistence phosphors okay and one another important thing is that uh, whenever uh, that this uh, electron beam strikes on the screen okay so if you see here there is a bright spot so whenever it is a strike on a screen its kinetic energy is absorbed by this phosphor material which is shown over here okay uh, and this creates heating okay and uh, we have to take care about this heat because the heat produced gives rise to a uh, term which is called as a phosphor burn okay so what do you mean by this phosphor burn this phosphor burn is due to this heating and which is going to damage your screen okay so that's why uh, this phosphor material that you are using which be, which will be having uh, some high burn resistance that you have to keep in mind okay so this must be having some, having some high burn resistance to avoid this phosphor burn okay so uh, what we have to do is that uh, to overcome this problem we have to uh, use a thin film of a metal like uh, aluminum uh, to the non v non viewing side of the screen means to the back side we can say okay so this aluminizing provides different advantages uh, like uh, uh, they will uh, they will act as a heat sink of a phosphor so that's why uh, the burning of this phosphor material is can be avoided and it can also increases the brightness level okay 
and they also uh, prevents the building up of charges on phosphor oxide that is again very important okay so these are the different things which can be avoided with the help of the uh, aluminum uh, or aluminizing we can say or la layer of aluminum which can be deposited to the non viewing side of the or we can say back side of this uh, phosphor screen okay so we have discussed the detail about this phosphor screen now okay I, and i think you got about this uh, this is all about the chemistry uh, that i have discussed and I, th i think you have studied this but why we have we are using phosphor and what are different advantages and disadvantage of this using phosphorus or fluorescent screen that also we have discussed and how to overcome that also we have discussed okay now one interesting thing that you should know is that uh, the phosphors uh, different phosphors are there and uh, if you see uh, different phosphorus uh, they are coming with the, their number that is p, like a p1 p2 p4 p7 p11 p15 p19 p26 p31 p33 like this and p39 okay so if you see a book uh, inside that book uh, all these materials and its characteristics and all other things are mentioned over here so let me discuss uh, little bit about this so if you see the phosphorus material that is p1 p2 p11 and p31 these are having short persistence uh, phosphorus okay so uh, generally uh, if you see uh, p31 okay i will not much uh, discuss much about this generally uh, if you see this p31 that can be used for general purpose application so that should you should know okay so whenever uh, we are uh, dealing with different electro electronic equipments and if that electronic equipment is having screen then you should have to keep in mind this one important thing is that there are certain different types of phosphor materials like p1 p2 p4 up to p39 in between that okay so you have to see uh, that table uh, you can get on, on internet as well but out of that which is very famous that is p31 that can be generally used for general purpose applications okay and another important thing i want to discuss about that is uh, here uh, if you see uh, this diagram here you can see some aqua aquatic coating over here okay so what is the use of this aquatic coating so let us discuss about this okay so when the bombarding of electrons so if you see this beam when the bombarding of electrons strike on the screen okay so what happens over here is they emit secondary electrons okay so whenever the bombarding is there they release energy and uh, they emit secondary electrons so in order to keep the screen in electrical equilibrium state this secondary uh, electrons uh, which will be transferred due to this bombard bombarding of electrons we have to collect the secondary electrons okay so th this should be collected and this collection of the secondary electrons uh, is done by so sol solution of a graphite called as a aqueda and so just keep this uh, in your mind i think uh, everything is covered from this uh, diagram now and i think you are well aware about this cathode tube and it's working okay so this is ab all about the cathode ray tube that uh, we have completed today the, the electron gun assembly we have discussed about deflection plate assembly okay and we have discussed about fluorescent screen okay now uh, i think uh, everyone has seen this cathode ray oscilloscope or a cro okay and generally we are focusing on analog uh, oscilloscope that is a cathode ray oscilloscope okay nowadays uh, some digital storage oscilloscope or digital oscilloscopes are available and that also we have to see at the end of this unit so if you see the cro the cro will look like this okay uh, in first year itself you may have uh, seen this or used this okay so so if you see these are the buttons which can be used to uh, adjust uh, x uh, parameters x axis parameters and y axis parameters so generally x axis parameter is nothing but time division uh, which can allow you to uh, expand or compress the time or x axis and generally if you see the y axis it is related to amplitude and uh, this amplitude can be adjusted or this compressed or uh, we can say expanded with the help of the voltage knob okay so uh, and here you can see that uh, these are called the channels or uh, probes okay so probes can be connected to these channels this can be called as channel number 1 ch this can be called as channel number 1 2 okay so after studying of this cro uh, we will see one another video related to this the functionality of this each and every 
button or we can say switch over here that is again very important and this this is the screen that we are talking about the fluorescent screen okay and here uh, you will see different divisions equal divisions horizontal and vertical divisions and this is your sine wave that is uh, displayed by this um, crt and the fluorescent screen okay uh, see we will see uh, this uh, practically as well okay don't worry about this how to use this CRO that is very important because most of the students are not having the knowledge of CRO how to use and most of the students are having the knowledge of just how to apply how to connect the channel and how to increase the voltage decrease the voltage how to expand and uh, we can say compress this x axis but that much is not sufficient because you must know everything because uh, if you want to enter in a core electronic field then you must handle different equipments like uh, function generator CRO okay so power supply okay so these three to four equipments are very important multimeter we can say so please uh, in uh, holidays also please see that uh, you are having the knowledge of this uh, okay so uh, I think multimeter also you have seen uh, then CRO you have seen function generator you have seen and power supply you are using from first year so just see uh, these uh, different equipments see some videos of related to this okay so don't uh, take just basic knowledge please uh, do in-depth study of this because this is very important you must know which power supply we are using uh, for our uh, application okay so you just know uh, what is the voltage that is 5 volt 10 volt 30 volt okay you know the voltage only but please see current as well okay sometimes the power supply is singular power supply okay so what do you mean by singular power supply what do you mean by uh, dual power supply that also you you know how to take a negative voltage from a power supply how to take a positive voltage from a power supply okay that also you must know and what is the current rating so which power supply should be used for digital circuits which power supply should be used for analog circuits what is the requirement of the current okay so you just uh, taking uh, care of the voltage only but at the same time current is again uh, important okay so that ratings are very important so take a function generator uh, connect function generator to CRO uh, generate some voltages with the help of that function generator and apply to the CRO and see the change okay this these things you have to do and I think uh, nowadays most of the resources are available on the internet and you can easily see some animated video of that and you can easily understand so make use of this you are having some time and in uh, right now you are in second year so you are having a two years but uh, see that you are strong with your basics okay that is very important so again if you see the multimeter the use of multimeter should be again very important how to uh, measure uh, resistance current voltages okay it may be ac voltage it may be dc voltage and most of the students are not knowing about how to use some uh, how to uh, uh, check the transistor on uh, multimeter how to uh, check the diodes on multimeter how to check some hybrid parameters of of the transistor on multimeter that also given in some multimeters okay how to check a capacitor on uh, sim uh, simple uh, multimeters that also you must know so these are very important equipments and uh, the study of this equipment is the next part of this you uh, we can see syllabus of this subject okay so that we will see afterwards so this is the about this is all about the front view of the CRO now uh, uh, whatever we have discussed about the vertical uh, deflection system or the vertical deflection plates we have seen but before applying any voltage to the vertical deflection uh, plates uh, which uh, which are different parts inside the uh, inside this that also you must know okay because we have talked about the part behind this means we have talked about the uh, vertical deflection plates only but if you see the system so this is a vertical deflection system so again uh, if you have studied uh, your analog circuit subject in depth and uh, if you are having a knowledge of different types of amplifiers then only you can understand what i am going to tell you okay uh, but you don't know about this then don't worry about this uh, you will in future you may study about this uh, that fet amplifier and this driver and the phase inverter and all other things okay but in uh, brief let me explain this okay so what is the use of this uh, vertical deflection system okay so the main function of this vertical deflection system is to provide an amplified signal of a proper level to drive the vertical deflection plates uh, 
uh, without any distortion okay so the main working of this vertical deflection system is to generate and to provide the voltage to the vertical deflection plate so right now we have discussed about this plates okay but now we have to discuss about the system which is providing the voltage to this x and y plates okay so right now we are talking about the vertical deflection systems so in upcoming slides we will discuss uh, together how this vertical and horizontal lines are synchronizing with each other or systems are synchronizing synchronizing with each other okay now uh, for the ampli amplification of the signal to appropriate level uh, it uses uh, vertical amplifiers okay so different types of amplifiers like this fet input amplifier and bin amplifier now uh, the vertical amplifier if you see here consists of number of stages having uh, fixed the sensitivity or gain we can say which is expressed in holtz per division and because of the fixed gain of this amplifier uh, and it can be designed in a such a manner that it meets the requirement of a stability and bandwidth okay so again the gain stability and bandwidth is so adjusted so that you can get a distortion less voltage over here okay the input stage if you see here this input stage uh, is uh, Uh, we can say preamplifier which consists of an FET source follower okay and the FET source follower has high uh, input impedance and this impedance is isolated by the uh, isolates the FET amplifier from the attenuator okay so if you see the next stage of this this FET source follower we can say uh, input stage is followed by the the FET source follower input stage is followed by the BJT emitter follower here okay and uh, in this uh, this is done in order to match the medium impedance of the fet amplifier with low input impedance of a phase inverter okay so uh, right now i have told you that uh, whatever i am telling to you uh, if you have studied the source follower and this impedance and the fet source follower vjt emitter follower then only uh, you understand what i am telling you okay but uh, just see uh, these two parts okay don't go uh, into deep just to see he, this is the fet input amplifier or pre amplifier and this is the main amplifier and some ar arrangement is done to uh, we can say uh, match the impedance impedance in terms uh, impedance can be called as a circuit resistance we can say okay so some adjustment is done uh, so that we can cascade this and uh, that is applied to the vertical deflection plates okay so this is all about the vertical deflection system okay so in short uh, we can explain like this this generates this generates a proper level of voltage to drive the vertical deflection systems okay don't go into deep that uh, what is source follower and all other things okay so if you see uh, cro there are bunch of circuits bunch of components are over there and if you see again simple laptop or uh, simple uh, we can say pcs inside that also you will get a number of circuits okay but we are familiar with some basic uh, functions of or basic parts of that okay so this is all about the vertical deflection system now uh, in next lecture uh, we will start with this delay line uh, what is the use of this delay line this is the important part inside the cro and we in next lecture itself we'll see why this uh, delay line is required and all other things okay so in next lecture we'll start with this delay line because in this lecture it will not be completed because we have to study uh, two types of the delay line like uh, uh, lumped parameter and a distributed parameter okay so in next lecture itself we'll start and we will complete these two parameters so in next in in this lecture uh, we have studied the we have done thorough study of the crt crt tube and vertical deflection system horizontal deflection system and we have discussed lot more about this screen okay so uh, with the help of this animated diagram okay now uh, i think uh, you have uh, the best uh, knowledge of this cro if uh, you have studied my lectures previous lectures and you have seen that uh, videos okay so now uh, in next part we will see different types of cros then how to measure frequency and all, all other things we have to see but for study of that uh, this much uh, basic knowledge of functionality of cro is important and that we have covered okay so thank you very much in next lecture we will start with this daily line thank you